With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, May 18th, 2016. Governor Snyder, in written responses to a federal oversight committee, answered questions about the Flint water crisis. Ron Fonger of the Flint Journal reports that the questions to which the governor responded included what actions he was taking to encourage former and current employees to submit to an interview as testimony, to which Snyder responded that whether the employees agree to providing testimony is up to them and their counsel. Snyder was asked about his recent staffing changes and why one employee directly involved in the Flint water crisis was still employed and involved with Flint, to which Snyder responded that he has committed to a cultural change in his office that expects his staff to immediately respond to situations that threaten health and safety. And Snyder also responded to questions on whether or not two of his staff who met with Flint leaders in July 2015 discussed with him the concerns raised about the water crisis then. The governor answered the questions by saying that he did not recall any discussions specifically about that meeting and held to his point that the DEQ and other regulators were telling him at the time that the water met water quality standards. Senator Elijah Cummings of Maryland, chair of the committee that heard testimony about Flint, said in a press release that he has grave concerns about the accuracy of the governor's testimony, is concerned that Snyder does not recall key details about or entirely failed to respond to several questions, and is also concerned that the governor still supports the emergency manager law. Senator Cummings released all of the governor's answers on Monday. Detroit police are expected to begin wearing body cameras in the near future. Khalil Al-Hajjal on MLive.com reports that the Detroit City Council approved on Tuesday a $5.2 million contract to equip the city police with body cameras. Detroit Police Chief James Craig said that the cameras will provide additional transparency beyond the view of police vehicle dash cams that will allow further review of officer interactions with residents. Multiple city council members said that the contract approval was a veritable no-brainer and an initial trial rollout of 25 body cameras in the 4th and 7th precincts will begin in June. In financial news, the U.S. Supreme Court on Tuesday ruled that brokers could be sued within the jurisdiction of individual states. The ruling affirmed a lower court decision that held that brokerages who broke state laws were liable in those states and were not solely accountable to federal SEC rules and laws. The practice known as short selling, a financial tool in which an investor could effectively bet against the increase in the price of a stock, is at the center of the court ruling, or more specifically, a variation of short selling known as naked short selling, in which investors do not have to own the security to bet against its price. This variation has been used to manipulate the price of a stock, driving down the amount of money that individual companies are trying to raise. In 2008, after a correction from which the U.S. markets have yet to fully recover, the Securities and Exchange Commission said that false rumors can lead to a a loss in investor confidence, and firms have used this financial tool as a means of deliberately manipulating the markets for their own profit. Brokers Merrill Lynch and Goldman Sachs both recently settled with Overstock.com that sued them under RICO and securities fraud claims over allegations that the firms were artificially manipulating the price of the company's stock. Stock offerings are used by companies to raise money, and if brokers artificially manipulate the stock prices as a tool to make money for themselves, a company can lose millions or billions that could have been used for research, development, and expansion. And according to the AMI Newswire, while short sales are a legitimate financial tool, naked short sales have negatively impacted the markets, especially in emerging industries. With this Supreme Court ruling, firms who feel as though the price of their stocks are being artificially and deliberately manipulated can sue in state courts where the practice could be more heavily regulated or illegal, which is a direct blow against Wall Street investment giants. In tech news, a judge has rejected Mozilla's request to force the U.S. government to disclose the vulnerability it used to compromise the anonymization network known as the Onion Router. Reuters reports that the developer of the Firefox browser was requesting to force the FBI to disclose the vulnerability used to arrest 137 people with a single search warrant. The Justice Department asked the judge to deny the request, citing national security, and U.S. District Judge Robert Bryan in Washington said on Monday that Mozilla's concerns should be addressed to the U.S. government rather than with his court. And finally, the Iraqi Ministry of Communications forced Iraqi ISPs to shut down the Internet to the entire country in a massive censorship effort. Only it's not what you think. In an article on Softpedia.com, ISPs confirmed the order came down from the government to shut down Internet access last Friday from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. 
right when students across the country were scheduled to be taking their national exams. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.